Hi, today I'm going to do an in-depth tutorial of how to do a custom game token design for 3D printing. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And I recently released a tutorial about how to design and make custom game tokens on a 3D printer. But today I'm going to do an in-depth look at how you start from scratch to create a custom token that you can then 3D print. So I'm going to show that process from using drawing software like Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator to do the detailed drawing, how to import that into 3D modeling software to make it three-dimensional, how to export it then in a format that you can slice it and print it on a 3D printer. So I'm going to cover that whole process in this episode. I'm going to start my design with a piece of black and white clip art that I'm going to image trace. I'm going to size it to fit my work area, which is about the size of the token I plan on making. I open the image trace window and I select ignore white and then I trace it. I remove the fill so I can see the lines and I see my two components. I'm going to move the lightning bolt up a little bit and that's about what I'm looking for right there. I'm doing this in Adobe Illustrator, but you can do everything I'm doing in Inkscape, which is free. Now I'm going to create a path that I can put my text around. And I'm going to pull it in place and I'm going to visually size it to where I think I want it to be. And then I'm going to use the Type on a Path tool to create the top part of my text. Now this circle is going to disappear once I've, I'm done using it for text placement. I use these handles to adjust its position along the circle. And now I'm going to create a second circle to do the bottom text. I want this bottom text to be oriented the same way as the top text, so that's why I'm putting it on two different circles. I have to get my spelling right and then I can slide it along in place and size it. I don't use this tool very often, so it takes a little fiddling for me to get it right. I'm going to make the lines on my graphic a little thinner, and now I'm going to select my two pieces of text, and I'm going to say Create Outlines, and these, this turns it into graphic elements. You save this step until you're done editing the text. I'm going to grab my cherry blossom ring from my Legend of the Five Rings tokens and uh, I'll put a link in for that video so you can see how this was made. I just pull it in, I size it to where I want it. I'm going to remove the fill from it as well so I can just see the outlines and make them thinner. This then is the drawing I'm going to use. I just need to turn it into a compound path and then save it as an SVG. Now Blender is the software I used originally for my tokens and I used this simple test token for my last video. I didn't use my gray lightning token because I had a problem with it and I'll show you that problem right now. When I went through the process I documented about how you pull in an SVG, how you can size it, how you solidify it. Um, and then zoom out so I can see my token, you see these spikes on top of it? This is a problem a lot of people have importing SVGs, and I did a lot of research, and in the end, the only thing I could do was to move back and forth between the 3D model and the drawing and, and take out every handle that was too close to a vertex. It was a ton of work. And you have to fix this because here's the 3D model and these are really happening in the 3D model as well. So after I posted that video, I reached out to one of my very smart viewers and my chemist friend, you know who you are, and asked for his advice. And his advice was use the simplest tool that works. And in this case, that's Tinkercad. Tinkercad is online, it's free, and it has simple tutorials. And after a few lessons, I was able to do this. I'm going to pull in a cylinder that will be the token, and I type in the dimensions to make that circle the size I want it to be. I also want smoother edges, so I'm going to go into the sides, number of sides, and increase it 
so that the edges are smoother. I can also type in the height for the cylinder. So now I'm going to be ready to import the SVG. And when you import it, it is simple and flawless. Now it shows up big and I can size it the same way I sized the cylinder. I just type in the dimensions. Then I select the two items and I align them by clicking align and then clicking on the center handles. And now I just need to get my proportions correct. So I'm going to turn this top part a different color so it's easier to see. And then I'm going to reduce the height on that and now it's embedded in the token and I need to just pull it up out of there to the right height. Very simple and intuitive. I select them and group them and now I can export them as an STL which is the file format I need for my 3D printer. Now it's an online system so I have the second step of going to that model and saying okay download that. But I printed this model and it's identical to the ones that I showed in my prior video. The raised design is perfect for stamping the color on like I did in my video. But you have another option here. You can also ungroup the two pieces, turn the top design into a hole instead of a solid, move it down into the token, and now you have the equivalent of an engraved design. And once again, you just group this and export it as an STL. And now you have something that you can either not paint or you could use an eyedropper to inlay color into this token. The final step, of course, is just to import these STL files into your slicer, in my case, Chai 2 box. And I'll pull the two models in here side by side so you can see and print them. Now, I would use supports, and I have a lot of information about supports in my earlier videos. So there you have a pretty simple process for creating custom tokens for 3D printing. And if you use Inkscape, in addition to Tinkercad, all the software is free. If you want to continue to follow me on my 3D printing journey, please subscribe to my channel.